Hello, Scott Napier here for the Bluegrass Unlimited. I'm um, going to talk a little bit about this wonderful mandolin record, the legendary Kentucky mandolin of Nolan Faulkner. For years, this has been somewhat of an underground cult classic must-have album for bluegrass mandolin players. Uh, it's it's wonderfully original, great playing, unique tone throughout. And um, I want to play the first track on side one, which is called The Blind Fiddler, a tune written by Nolan himself. A uh, couple things. Uh, Nolan used an old, I believe it was an F2 Gibson with an oval sound hole to give him a unique sound for most of his career. So for this, I'm uh, using a 1924 Gibson Snakehead, which has a similar kind of a sound. And this tune in particular is uh, tuned in a little bit of a unique way. It's not really cross tuning or anything. It's alternate, but it's got the low G is tuned down to E. So gives it a really cool haunting sound. Although it is a bit of a challenge uh, to play it because it's so uh, low and loose. It's easy to knock it out of tune and easy to uh, cause it to buzz. But I'm gonna perform it for you here with his, his two solos on the record and the wonderful intro as the Blind Fiddler. Great song, great playing by Nolan Faulkner. Um, I'll just jump right in. The kickoff is way down here on the high E, 12th fret E string. Uh, and it can be uh, intimidating at first, but if you think about it, it's very much in that box Monroe style portal shape playing. Except for he's way the heck down here on the high E. Um, but he's, he's definitely playing this closed position. Also, it's all downstrokes. Um, you could almost get it. This almost sounds like like that, especially the recording is a little faster than what I played it here. Um, but sure enough, it's if he's not shuffling or tremolo, it's it's pretty much down. Uh, what's so cool about the, the opening line is the phrasing more than anything. If you notice, some of the key notes are louder than others. Uh, dominating, uh, just driving, driving it home. So, typical tips, especially this note. It's a, uh, it's a little louder. So if I really slow it down, sometimes it's hard to play at a really slow tempo with with this type of uh, feel. So it goes. So basically you play your way from this E note to that E note and then backtrack um, with this being the bridge here. It's on the 10th fret A, which is a G note, I think. 
also. And notice this cuts really short. So. And then he slides. He goes from the A on the fifth fret to the seventh. Sli he slides from a D to an E note. But he does not use the E string, which is very typical for uh, mandolin players, fiddle players as well. Uh, but he, he chooses to leave that out. So those three notes from the slide. And then something wonderful happens here for me. Um, it really fit. The, the fingering is very clever and tasteful. How he how he finds this note and then hits an open eighth to reposition his hand. Uh, I want to do it connected a little so you can kind of hear what's going on, and then I'll show you. So from the slide, from the A string from the D note to the E, grabs the G, third fret on the E string with his index finger, turns loose of it, moves his index finger to the B note, which is second fret A, and then hits it open. So you got that going on. What it does is it lets him reposition his hands seamlessly, uh, and, it, and it's just the perfect notes. I mean, it's not... It's not something I would normally think to do, but it's a, it's just really beautiful fingering. So, then he rocks it back, and then he does the A open A. All downstrokes. And I, and in my opinion, I think this is more reminiscent of Gypsy Jazz rest strokes to me, the way he's playing, which he pushes down through the strings and um, your pick rests on the strings below. As opposed to, you know, more of just your typical mandolin repetitive down. I guess if he got really fast, he would change that up. But it goes once more. Uh, introduces the cool chord right out of the gate with the low, the low E note and he bars the strings quite a bit throughout much like an old time fiddler would do. I uh, recommend uh, new students and new players uh, tend to bar like this with the side of their fingers. It's a good start but I would um, recommend trying to find a way to do it with your fingertip. It's um, it's a bit of a mystery how it happens. For me it's um, the advice is to kind of push in between the pairs. Um, I mean, you're not going to mash all four strings. I mean, do two and a half, three, maybe sometimes. But it, it works. It just like um, in between the D, for instance, the D and the A string. Um, the focus of my finger is between them. So it's just a very cool sound. also eases into that and he brings in all of the strings to get the complete chords so he lets it breathe for a second and here he comes full throttle uh, with the use of that low E note and again that's that rest stroke um, formula that I'm talking about it's, it really it's finesse and power all at the same time. Plus, like I said, the challenge of uh, dealing with this very loose low E, which is normally a G. So, beautiful opening line. Hammer on there. And then if you notice throughout, this is familiar. This little boxy type. Two frets two and five on the, on the A's and D's uh, in a number of ways throughout the songs through the song that happens. So... The next line. That's your first spot of the slide. 
slow tremolo. I love how he chooses to use this note several times in a row with a little bounce. Um, it's all about, it's more about the feel and the phrasing than the, than the um, number of notes. And it takes more out of you. It's harder to play, in my opinion, with that, that type of approach as opposed to just going to neutral and just blazing a bunch of notes. So the restraint is, is hard and powerful. <laughs> so the opening line up to where we are here. <laughs> line is very much like the first line and a really pretty line that ends the phrase it's a bit of an arpeggio he occasionally will go D down to the D back to the E and then sometimes E to E flat. So the two examples of that would be or with the bar. So from the top. plays with that low tuning it's hard to do slow so and there's about three variants of that that he does sometimes he and sometimes one time he singles the first one out and then sometimes he leaves the low note open the entire time so I think he just plays with it a little bit. He's uh, totally in command of it, um, and it's just great ex uh, sense of expression um, and just raw. But but I feel that is that is that it's somewhat planned out, but yet imp improv as well. So. <laughs> Once more, we're going to play our way to where we're at and we're going to look at part B of the song. That happens twice. You repeat all of that. So into part B. Slow tremolo. Again, no open E, a single, it's single A almost the entire time. And um, it sounds like it's going from E down to D, uh, but it, but the rhythm, the rhythm guitar and the bass and all that is just staying E major, a very major sound, not even a seventh, um, which just creates a great sense of contrast and tension. Um, so, Back to that little box shape of the 2-5 uh, with an open A in the middle. So you got <clears throat> 5 to 7. No E ringing again. Here's why I think that's the, that he holds out. He saves it for here. Which is a very cool effect because the song itself goes into B7 at that point. So then it goes so that so all the music goes there but Nolan holds out only with the he uses the B note but then he brings in the E against the B which is uh, like a one over five if if you're familiar with the number system it's very very, very blues influenced uh, tension building so imagine the band here and he just he just ramming that E 
you know, right in there. It's like um, he refuses to go where the where the band's going in a planned way. <laughs> so. Repeat. Beautiful lick to end the part. And the first, another variation to the shuffle part, which is a Monroe thing. You know, something that is used a lot in the key of G with the low G string, uh, Mule Skinner Blues, um, working on a building, stuff like that, two coats. Um, but here he gets to do it in E, so uh, very clever um, and creative to think, to use that here. Um, but And he lets it ring and sustain as much as possible with the oval ho, um, and just play into the mandolin strengths, I believe, so. There's a fiddle break on the record, uh, and then Nolan comes in with one final break with um, small variations, uh, but very strong variations as well. So he starts starts the second break the same, and then he goes into a little chordal strummy thing like. here which is a B E flat E so and then he follows up very cool and then he keeps going uh, another round for part A Slot variation. This is so restrained and refined it. Then he chooses to use this one, which is a perfect match because it's less notes, sustain, and ringy sound. So. be the last time around. It's pretty much the same. That one part, I think it's at this moment, he does a slow tremolo, almost not a tremolo. Builds it up. And here comes the um, the beautiful ending, so and it's all downstrokes. So what he does here is open E, uses the A. Quick hammer on on the to the B note, then the open D, double up, yeah, super.
super cool. That's The Blind Fiddler by the great Nolan Faulkner. Thank you for your time.